guy getting ready to leave. It's 425. We are at mile marker 104.5. When I get back to the trail, we're going to Waterbury. Um, so that's 184.6. So pretty much 80 miles. I just got reservations at the Stagecoach Inn for Sunday. So that gives us four full hiking days. And then that'll be Saturday night. Wake up and go in to Waterbury. I can only get it for one night. I was going to take a zero. I like hard, hiking for four or five hard days and then taking a zero on the way up to Rutland. Interrupted slightly because I didn't have enough chow, so that's why I had to go into uh, Manchester Center, which so thankful I did or I wouldn't have got to beat Monk or Papa Bear. Yep, so, man, all I got to do is average 18s and then a nice little 10 or 12 in if I want to do it that way or 420s, but I know we got some big stuff coming up, so... I want to keep it in the 18 range. I'll knock out a 20 if we can, um, just to reduce what I have to maybe hike on that Sunday. I'm going to email the owner of the Stagecoach in right now to see if, just tell him, hey, if anything opens up for that second night to pencil me in there. All right, y'all. I'm going to drink a second cup of coffee, eat probably my 1,000th calorie of the morning, head out the door. <laughs> Nothing like walking out of town, getting passed by a big old truck. You know, I'm clean, took a shower this morning, feel good, and find out it's some kind of garbage truck. And it stunk, and it kicked up a bunch of dirt, so now I feel like I got garbage juice all over me. Anyway, the weather up here, it's a good theory that I have in my book to the test for me. I keep reminding people too, just because I wrote a book about it and I studied this. Doesn't make it any easier for me, I promise you. It's probably harder for me. That's why I had to write a damn book. But my expectation was I was gonna come up here and it's gonna be a little bit cooler. And it is. Wife said it was like 91 and hot as hell at home yesterday. Definitely wasn't that here. It was very nice. Humidity is built back in. Feels like it's around 70 degrees right now. I'm sweating like a goat again. Uh, but it's perfect. There just can't be any expectations. We control none of it. Just gotta go with it. Rain's coming. Yeah, that could suck. Or it's awesome because it's gonna help charge all this water in front of me. It's supposed to have been so dry up north, so. Yeah, no expectations, folks. Flow with it. The universe is perfect. It's us that's imperfect. I know you can't see much, but I had the thought that it won't be here in the next five minutes. That's how our Rick and Monkey mind likes to work. But um, somebody asked me in the comments. I'm not sure if they were just being funny or serious or it doesn't matter. That was a great question. Like, seriously, why do you get up so early? And here's the answer. I didn't always. But being in the unit and the command that I was in in the military, I got to watch a lot of incredible, successful leaders. Then I started paying attention to successful business leaders. Then I started paying attention to people that I just really respect in life. And I started looking for common thread between all of them. And you know where I'm going with it. Common thread has always been, they get up early, early risers. Doesn't mean that you have to to be great. Just means that that's the common thread I saw amongst them. And here's the way that's played out with me over the last 15 years. More than that, really, 20. Those early morning hours are when I work on me. That's when I get up, meditate, read or write, work out, and then eat something healthy. 
then the matrix day starts. And that's the day most of you are familiar with the rat race of just trying to keep up until it's time to go back home and collapse down into the living room chair or the bed or something. And that's the world I was living before I learned how to get up early and take care of me. Because if you don't take care of you, what we see play out in the world, especially in our country, is a 60 to 80 percent obesity rate um, heart disease being the number one killer of, of humans in the united states and stress just being on everybody's list of you know one of those harmful um, effects on our body so that's why i get up early it's the time to take care of you now for all you night owls you may have a routine where you can do this as well. I just found that, you know, it's probably because it was who I was surrounding myself with in the military. Man, we gotta get up early on a routine basis anyway. But the leaders I was watching would be up an hour or two before that early morning call. Impressive. Ah, man, let me go. Let me go hit this white blaze up here with a fist bump, man. Uh, let me turn my light on a little bit brighter. I miss, will miss, AT. 105 and a half ish miles. <sighs> it has been real, my friend. Feels like home. Now moving into the unknown, which is also exciting as hell. All right, y'all down that way. Let's go to Canada. This is Molson Rest Shelter, mile 109.5 or something like that. Means we've done about five miles, not including the two road walking miles, so not bad. It's only 740. Those were some of the cruisiest miles ever. I love shelters with little cooking spots right here. It's like good tent spots around. One right there, there's several right back up in here. Pretty nice looking shelter. Water source is right down there, just past the southbounder. And uh, we're gonna get heading northbound. Let's roll, y'all. Uh, the last thing, the last, last thing I'll say about the Greenbrier Inn where I stayed last two nights. I had to upload three videos and I was like, oh man, kind of in the middle of nowhere. They have good Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, good cell service there. But it's like, I don't know how their Wi-Fi is gonna be. I connected to their 5G, a video that would have taken, I don't know, 30 minutes at home, 40 minutes at home. And we have fast internet. It's like uploaded in six minutes. I don't know what kind of voodoo magic they have there. But that was awesome. So for all you vloggers, if you're not worried about paying $120 a night, not a bad place to be. Y'all can start noticing the yellower leaves. Should walk farther north. I love it. I'm um, just responding to a couple of comments. Don't really have the time yet to do a lot of typing to respond. So just some comments I find interesting or want to if I was having a conversation, we did be fun. So somebody asked, do you like McDonald's just when you're on trail or do you like it all the time? Man, let's not kid ourselves. I love it all the time. I just don't let myself eat it ever. Usually, unless we're on trail or I just consider it a treat. I've been doing really good on whatever program I'm on. But why do I love it so much? I think most people would ask that question 
probably grew up with one just around the corner. But if you grew up where I did in North Georgia, which my little town is huge now, but back then we only had like one or two restaurants. And it damn sure wasn't McDonald's. Close to McDonald's was Roswell, Georgia. So that was a huge treat to get to get in the car with the family on like a Friday evening. And we go to McDonald's for Arthur Treacher's. Get some fried fish. Um, man, those are treats. So yeah, there's definitely some nostalgia built up around McDonald's for me. And I will always be a fan. Now, do I understand that it's trash food? Yes. Do I care? Nope. little break and going hard it's only 9 30 and I don't know what mile this is this is a beautiful overlook I'm gonna sit here Alan watch it for a minute just finishing up a quick lunch here at blood root blood rot blood rot I think gap uh, it's the intersection of the long trail and a um, snowmobile trail I believe I uh, should have three something left to the next shelter, Sunrise Shelter. Thunder's right behind me, so we're getting wet. So I'm going to pull out the umbrella and batten down the hatches and try to get there as soon as we can. It's on 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Doing pretty good. It's going to be an early day, and that's good. I'm going to get in and got some things to clean up on the GoPro, and it takes longer to transfer the videos over now, so good to go. I like starting early. Lunch was a peanut butter banana cliff bar with peanut butter on top. And Nature's Bakery Big Bars. I haven't said it before. There's almost zero bugs out here. It's amazing. Amazing. Love it. Probably why there's not many birds though too. I figured that's their primary food source. When I was here again early in the season, it was so loud with birds. I loved it. Pretty butterfly. All right, let's get going. Here comes the rain. Status. Currently getting my ass kicked. It's nice there, so. All right, so the David Logan shelter is point two down that way. We're not doing that. Sunrise shelter, which is supposedly a crappy shelter, 6.3. Brandon Gap, 7.2. One of those is my end destination, I think, today. 6.3 would be exactly 20 or right at 20. 7.2, just a little bit more. I'm going to get rained on before I get there. We're going to get moving up that way. And of course, it's up, but that's okay. y'all it's about 2 30 just made it to sunrise shelter boy this is a beat 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 shelter looking for some good tent spots there's one up there i guess i can use this rudy and rocky i'm gonna look around real quick though before i settle just thinking about just since i'm the only one here but it's early there'll be more people here i'm sure uh, but the mosquitoes are fairly bad here yeah, I'll find a place to set up. For sure. Because once people show up, man, my time of getting up doesn't work with anybody else's schedule. That's why I just tent. All right. That was a 20-mile day. By 2.30, 
I'll take it. I would keep going right now. Uh, but about 1.7, you get to a gap. I don't know that there's water or anything. There's nothing on gut hook about it. And then there's gigantic climb right after that. And then, yeah, there's no outs. So we're going to call this home for the night and do that in the morning. All right, let me look around. I'll get back with y'all. All right, y'all, this hot pile of mess right here is the start of my spot in the shelter. Um, yeah, I don't want to be in here, but hey, whatever. It's going to be dry. It's been a, a good day, man. I don't care about the rain. The rain's nothing. In fact, after it rained, like I was enjoying walking in it. Um, it's a good day. Let me turn this light off. There. It's a good day. Um, 20 miles. I'll take it, looking at gut hooks the next few days, it's gonna be rough. Hoping to do around 17 to 18. Just gotta keep walking, that's all there is to it. And uh, set us up for Waterbury. Hopefully take another zero in Waterbury. Um, we'll play that by ear. We're sitting at 124 right now. No, that's not right. Yeah, no, ugh, that is right. 124 point something right now. And, um, yeah, looking forward to the rest of it. All right, one thing's for sure. Sitting here in the rain by myself, listening to the music I was listening to, drinking some tea and eating. Boy, it makes me miss my family bad. That's the exciting thing about coming out here. and It just re-energizes your faith and your love for your family. And I do, I'll miss them. I'd love to be there with them tonight. But I am meant to be here, and I am meant to walk to Canada, and that's what's going to happen, and then I will go home and be with them. All right, y'all. Be with your families tonight. Be a good family member, and uh, make it count. I will see y'all in the morning. Deuces.